history's greatest inventions, most weren't genius, just accidents. Penicillin, found because Fleming's lab looked like a student flat after a weekend bender. The microwave started with a melted chocolate bar in a bloke's pocket. Snack storage gone nuclear. Cornflakes, designed to kill desire. Congratulations, you've invented sadness in a bowl. Bubble wrap, wallpaper. Nothing says cozy like walls with acne. And here's the punchline. These accidents made billions. You spill a pint, it's a disaster. They spill chemicals and invent Coca-Cola. So buckle up. Ten accidental inventions that change the world. Proof that civilizations built on mistakes, not genius. At number 10, let's begin with a proper trip. Literally, in 1943, Swiss chemist Albert Hoffman was working on a compound called lysergic acid diethylamide. Hardly a rock and roll name, is it? He was searching for a treatment for circulation problems, not the meaning of the universe. Then came history's strangest lab accident. Hoffman accidentally absorbed a tiny dose through his skin, and within an hour, he was wobbling on his bicycle ride home, convinced the world had turned into a Salvador Dali painting. Imagine your daily commute, but the pavement's dripping like fondue and the traffic lights are having an identity crisis. That day is now celebrated as Bicycle Day, the world's first documented acid trip and arguably the most colorful bike ride in history. Hoffman didn't just discover a chemical, he basically jump-started the psychedelic 1960s tie-dye shirts, lava lamps, uh, music festivals where no one remembers the music, the lot. Of course, authorities weren't thrilled. LSD was banned, demonized, and blamed for everything from bad dancing to moral decay. And yet it all started with a Swiss scientist muttering the most expensive Oops, in human history, science, ladies and gentlemen, endlessly serious until it accidentally gives you unicorns in rush hour. At number nine, let's talk about the world's crunchiest accident, cornflakes. Dr. John Harvey Kellogg wasn't trying to create a fun breakfast, far from it. He was obsessed with purity, convinced that bland food would suppress sinful urges. Yes, your morning bowl of cereal was originally designed to keep you morally upright. Imagine pitching Frosties with the slogan, they're celibate. Uh, the story goes that Kellogg and his brother Will accidentally left some boiled wheat sitting out too long. When they ran it through rollers, it flaked instead of forming dough. Rather than toss it away, they baked the flakes and accidentally invented the dullest snack in history. But here's the twist. Instead of killing desire, they created an empire. People loved the crunch, and soon cornflakes spread faster than jam at an English breakfast table. Of course, Will had more of a business brain and wanted to add sugar. John Harvey, the health fanatic, was horrified. Imagine one brother shouting, purity while the others yelling, profit, classic sibling drama. Eventually, sugar won, and breakfast became the loudest, sweetest meal of the day. So next time you pour cornflakes, remember, they were meant to kill temptation, but ended up tempting the entire planet. The ultimate backfire in a bowl. At number eight, the glue that was never meant to exist. In 1942, scientists were searching for a clear plastic to use in gun sites during the war. What they got instead was a substance so sticky, it ruined every piece of equipment it touched. Lab notes basically read, strong, adhesive, utterly useless. They shelved it, annoyed that their invention clung harder than a toddler at the school gates. Years later, someone finally thought, Hang on, this annoying mess might actually be useful, and so super glue was born. Suddenly, the world had a miracle product 
that could fix mugs, toys, shoes, can and permanently attach your fingers together when you panic. Don't pretend it's never happened. We've all stood in the kitchen, flapping like a penguin waiting for acetone to save us. But here's the twist most people don't know. During the Vietnam War, medics used super glue spray to seal wounds temporarily. Something once dismissed as lab clutter ended up saving soldiers' lives. Not bad for a reject. So yes, super glue is living proof that one person's failure can become another's lifesaver, or at the very least, the reason your remote control has looked slightly dodgy since 2003. At number seven, a childhood favorite that began life as wallpaper cleaner. Yes, Play-Doh wasn't created to entertain children. It was invented to scrub soot off walls back when people still used coal heating. The original stuff was dull, gray, and smelled like something between soap and regret, a hardly toy shop material. But here's the twist. Teachers noticed kids loved shaping it into silly figures more than actually cleaning anything. The company quickly pivoted, added colors, and rebranded it as Play-Doh. Suddenly, a failed cleaning product became the childhood obsession of millions. Honestly, the only thing it ever truly cleaned was parents' free time. Of course, once kids got hold of it, Play-Doh went everywhere. Carpets, hair, the dog. Generations of parents have since wondered why evolution gave children opposable thumbs just to mash neon dough into the upholstery. And who hasn't mistaken that salty smell for sweets at least once? It's like evolution's cruel joke. Today, Play-Doh is iconic proving that sometimes the most successful products aren't born in boardrooms, but in accidents. And in this case, accidents that left permanent stains on the carpet. Science gave us molding clay, and kids gave us chaos. At number six, the little blue pill that wasn't meant to change date nights forever. In the 1990s, Pfizer was testing a, a new drug for chest pain and high blood pressure. The results? Utterly disappointing. It barely helped the heart at all, but there was one side effect the researchers couldn't ignore. Male volunteers kept returning the pills with suspiciously big smiles. Let's just say circulation was improved, but not exactly where they'd planned. At first, Pfizer thought it was a fluke, but the reports kept piling in. Soon, scientists realized they hadn't created a heart drug, They'd created the world's first pharmaceutical celebrity. In 1998, Viagra was approved, and within a year, it became a billion-dollar blockbuster. The impact went beyond medicine. Viagra entered popular culture, the subject of late-night jokes, dodgy adverts, and countless awkward conversations at family barbecues. Even politicians couldn't resist name-dropping it. Pfizer, meanwhile, became richer than the Queen's corgi breeder. Of course, it wasn't all laughs. The pill has helped millions with real conditions. But let's be honest. When history books list humanity's greatest discoveries, somewhere between penicillin and the internet, there's a tiny blue tablet smiling smugly. At number five, let's talk about Alfred Nobel, a man who accidentally made the world much louder. In the 1860s, Nobel was experimenting with nitroglycerin, an explosive so unstable it could go off if you sneeze near it. One day, he noticed a jar had leaked onto some sawdust, and nothing happened. By accident, he discovered the perfect way to stabilize nitro. Mix it with an absorbent, and suddenly you had dynamite. Far safer to transport but still powerful enough to rearrange a mountain. Nobel patented it, made a fortune, and construction companies rejoiced. Unfortunately, so did armies. His invention was quickly used not only to build railways, but also to blow people to pieces. Nobel became known as the Merchant of Death, which is not the sort of nickname you want on your CV. Feeling guilty, he decided to use his fortune to fund annual prizes for those who benefit humanity. The Nobel Prizes, yes, the award for peace 
exists thanks to a man who created the loudest boomstick of the 19th century. Talk about mixed messaging. So the next time you see a Nobel laureate smiling proudly, just remember their medal is paid for by a mountain exploding somewhere. At number four, the world's favorite fizzy drink, which began as medicine. In 1886, pharmacist John Pemberton was trying to make a cure for headaches and nerves. His solution, a sweet, syrupy liquid mixed with carbonated water and in the early days, a dash of cocaine. Yes, your doctor could quite literally prescribe you a glass of Coke. Imagine the NHS handing out cans of fizzy pop with your paracetamol. Pemberton marketed it as a health tonic, sold for five cents a glass at soda fountains. People loved the taste and possibly the extra kick from the coca leaves. Very quickly, Coca-Cola stopped being medicine and became pure refreshment. The company removed the cocaine in the early 20th century, but by then the world was already hooked. Over the years, Coke has sponsored wars, Christmas adverts, and even Santa Claus's red suit. Not bad for a failed headache cure. It went from pharmacy shelves to global domination with 1.9 billion servings consumed every day. So next time you crack open a cold one, remember it was meant to calm your nerves. Instead, it made the world jittery, hyperactive, and permanently addicted to bubbles. Medicine never tasted so marketable. At number three, the stickiest failure in history. Post-it notes. In 1968, chemist Spencer Silver at 3M was trying to invent the strongest glue imaginable. Instead, he created the exact opposite, a weak adhesive that barely held anything. Utterly useless, right? His colleagues thought so too. Imagine showing off your super glue that politely lets go after a minute. Not the best day at the office. For years, the idea sat on a shelf until another 3M scientist, Art Fry, had a eureka moment. He sang in a church choir and kept losing his bookmarks in the hymn book. Fry remembered Silver's rubbish glue and thought, perfect, a sticky note you can slap on, remove, and reuse. By the late 1970s, post-it notes hit the market and suddenly every office in the world was covered in little yellow squares. They became essential for to-do lists, doodles, and of course the greatest of all art forms, the passive-aggressive note on the fridge. Who needs a face-to-face -face argument when you can write, clean up your mess in bright neon paper? So yes, post-it notes are proof that even failed glue can hold together modern civilization, or at least the kitchen rotor. At number two, the kitchen accident that changed how we eat forever, the microwave oven. In 1945, American engineer Percy Spencer was fiddling with a radar magnetron, as you do, when he noticed the chocolate bar in his pocket had melted. Most people would be annoyed. Spencer, however, thought, hang on, I can cook with this. That's either genius or the laziest light bulb moment in history. He ran more experiments, sticking popcorn kernels near the magnetron. They exploded. Then he tried an egg, which promptly blew up in a colleague's face. Imagine having to explain that health and safety incident report, but the principle worked. Microwaves could heat food in seconds. By 1947, the first radar range was born, a massive machine taller than a man and weighing nearly 350 kilograms, perfect if you wanted to reheat your tea, and also demolish the kitchen counter. Over the decades, it shrank down, eventually fitting neatly next to your toaster. Today, over 90% of households own one, from reheating curry to committing unspeakable crimes against pizza. The microwave has become the symbol of modern convenience. So yes, one melted chocolate bar gave us the ultimate lazy chef's tool. 
proof that sometimes the sweetest accidents lead to the hottest results. At number one, the messiest, moldiest accident in medical history, penicillin. In 1928, Scottish scientist Alexander Fleming returned from holiday to find his lab in an absolute state. One of his petri dishes, left out like a student's washing up, had grown a patch of mold. Normally, you'd bin it and hope your supervisor never noticed. But Fleming spotted something odd. The mold had killed the bacteria surrounding it. Intrigued, he grew more of the fungus, identified it as Penicillium notatum, and realized he'd stumbled on the world's first true antibiotic. What began as poor hygiene turned into a revolution in medicine. Penicillin went on to save over 200 million lives, transforming infections from death sentences into minor inconveniences, all because one man couldn't tidy his desk. The discovery was so groundbreaking that during World War II, factories churned out penicillin like sweet shops. Soldiers who might have died uh, from a simple scratch survived. The irony, Fleming himself was famously messy for the rest of his life. His Nobel Prize speech basically confirmed cleanliness may be next to godliness, but untidiness just saved humanity. So yes, the world's greatest medical breakthrough began not with order and discipline, but with mold in a dish. Proof that sometimes the key to saving civilization is forgetting to do the washing up. And because you've stuck around like cling film, here's a bonus fact, bubble wrap. Today, it's the world's favorite stress toy, but originally it was meant to be wallpaper. In 1957, two engineers, Alfred Fielding and Mark Chavan, sealed two shower curtains together, trapping air bubbles. <laughs> they thought it would be fashionable textured wallpaper. Spoiler, it wasn't. Imagine covering your living room in giant plastic pimples, very chic, but someone noticed it worked brilliantly as packaging, keeping items safe soon. Bubble wrap became the hero of shipping departments everywhere. And let's be honest, nobody cares about the packaging. We just want to pop it. Uh, the sound of pure joy, one satisfying snap at a time. So. Yes, even failed interior design can change the world. And if that's not the most accidental invention of all, I don't know what is. And that's our list. 10 world-changing mistakes, plus a cheeky bonus about bubble wrap, the wallpaper no one asked for, but everyone loves to pop from penicillin saving millions to Kellogg's cornflakes ruining breakfasts it's proof that accidents really do make history. What's the lesson? Don't be afraid of failure. Your half-baked project, messy experiment, or the time you nearly set fire to the kitchen could be the start of something brilliant or at least mildly profitable. Which invention surprised you most? Drop it in the comments. And uh, if you've got your own accidental genius moment, share that too. Don't forget to subscribe because next week we'll dive into more bizarre science and everyday madness. Who knows? Maybe the next great idea is already sitting in your fridge next to last week's leftovers.